That's Lisa Hort from the Manning Valley Neighbourhood Services Centre. News. News coming up next on ABC Mid North Coast Breakfast. I can't get advice, for example, about how to talk to police about getting an ABO in place. A Port Macquarie nurse. Boys and Barbara Ann on ABC Mid North Coast, half past seven. degrees in Coffs Harbour and Port Macquarie. Good morning, Madeline Cross with ABC Mid-North and Coffs Coast News. The Mid-North Coast Legal Centre says it's being forced to drop its specialist domestic violence legal program after missing out on a share of federal government funding. Since the program was set up last year, it has worked with over 150 women experiencing domestic violence, assisting them with court proceedings, housing access and child protection. Assistant Principal Solicitor Sarah Dahlenberg says many women in the region will be left vulnerable without access to free and timely legal services. Sometimes they fall through the cracks and don't get advice if they can't get someone who can give them advice really quickly. So we think that women will be missing out on getting that legal advice and may potentially be put in danger if they can't get advice, for example, about how to talk to police about getting an ABO in place. A Port Macquarie Nurses Union delegate says he would like to see the state government respond to the issues being raised at the Port Base Hospital. Yesterday, thousands of hospital staff walked off the job across the state, including at major mid-north coast hospitals. Nurses and Midwives Association branch president Mark Brennan says people are fed up after a devastating two years and want answers from the state government. I'm hoping that the state government and our local member will understand how their hospital system is not coping and especially our local member being the next nurse will come out and support us, at least make a comment. New South Wales Health in a statement says that the flexible staff to patient ratio system currently in place ensures the right number of nurses in the right place at the right time. New South Wales Health also says it's considering whether to take action against the nurses union over yesterday's strike action. Port Macquarie Hastings councillors will consider cancelling its climate change emergency declaration at today's council meeting. The council passed a motion in March last year declaring a climate emergency. Councillor Sharon Griffiths will move to recite to resign it tonight, saying the actions associated with the declaration are taking up too many council resources. I actually don't believe that climate change is a bigger issue as people think it is, really, to be honest. And in the end, it's about having a practical outcome. Just because it becomes a hot topic doesn't mean that it wasn't already relevant. It was relevant. It means that we are actually still progressing down that path. Another person has died with COVID-19 on the mid-north coast, a person in their 90s from the Port Macquarie Hastings area. The local health district says there are 60 COVID-19 cases in local hospitals with two people in intensive care. There were 262 new cases reported across the local health district to 4pm Monday. Of those cases, 105 were from the Port Macquarie Hastings area. 93 from the Coffs Harbour LGA, 29 from the Kempsey Shire, 20 from the Bellingen Shire and 15 are from the Nambucca Valley LGA. The latest property research reveals house values across the mid-north coast have jumped by almost a third in the past year. Louisa Rubo has more. The jump in house values puts the median price for a home on the mid-north coast at $717,000. For a unit, the median price is now $530,000, an increase of about 28%. CoreLogic's quarterly regional market update also reveals that dwelling sales across the region are 24 percent higher than a year ago. The days a house spends on the market is 30 days, down from 61 a year ago. CoreLogic's head of research, Eliza Owen, says a potential end to working from home is a factor that may slow growth in the regional housing market if employers make a return to the physical office space a priority long term. In news elsewhere, voters will have to wear a mask to cast a ballot at the forthcoming federal election, but won't have to be vaccinated. The Australian Electoral Commission has been detailing the extra steps it will take to make sure polling places are COVID safe. The federal election is due to be held before the end of May. 
and Russia says some of the nation's troops are returning to base after exercises near Ukraine. However, NATO says it has yet to see any evidence of the de-escalation that could avert a military conflict. To the weather, a partly cloudy day across the region today with a chance of fog this morning and possible showers through the day. To hear today's local news, search online for ABC Local and look for your local station. ABC News. Around 20 to mention this morning. No, I think, I think uh, unfortunately, Omicron is still around. I think uh, uh, it has fallen heavily on school kids and families of school children, um, which is, is tricky. But I encourage people um, definitely not to ignore any symptoms, get a test and don't take it around. So what we don't want is, is introductions into aged care and into other vulnerable settings as well. Dr David Durheim, good to talk to you this morning. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. That is Dr David Durheim there, public health physician with Hunter New England Health. Yeah, a bit of a wrap of how things are going in our region at the moment. And look, coming up after the news at half past seven, we're going to be talking about the vaccine Novavax. It is expected to arrive in our region this week. It arrived on Australian shores a week earlier than expected. And we're going to be checking in with a local GP clinic who will be delivering the protein-based jab. That's coming up after 7.30. Also, after 7.30, we're going to hear from the Department of Education on a push for a special needs school in Narrabri, similar to what communities like Tamworth and Gunnedah have. That's all coming up after the headlines. We're heading up to the news now. It is half past seven. ABC Radio, it's yours. Yours for live grandstand sport. Yours for the latest on your local team. Yours, win, lose or draw. ABC Radio. News for New England Northwest. Good morning, I'm Kemi Maguire. A prominent cattle company specialising in carbon says a new property now added to its portfolio will be a strong addition. The Wilmot Cattle Company has bought the historic Paradise Creek station near Inverell for a price tag the ABC understands exceeds $20 million. Wilmot has a growing president presence in soil carbon capture, including a $500 million deal with Microsoft. The general manager, Stuart Austin, says continuing to grow its portfolio is essential for that. It does take some scale to offset the cost of participating in a, in a soil carbon project. The soil carbon level is actually quite reasonable, but there certainly will be some upside in them. Um, and so you know, we'll register it with the ERF and begin that process of baselining. Around 20 Hanging Rock residents have attended a public meeting to discuss the proposed Hills of Gold wind farm in Nundal. Prior to last night, the Department of Planning and Environment issued a letter seeking more information from the company Engie on several factors about the development. The project has received up to 300 public submissions, more than half of half of which are against the project. Local resident Luke Brand says despite noise and environmental impact, the economic benefit was also a major talking point and concern for locals. So I'm a sixth generation Hanging Rock resident. We've watched this town wither and die as things like even the council offices, the council jobs have moved away. There's no such thing as a, as a council job in Nundle anymore. Um, the Forest Commission has no fixed uh, employers. So the, the benefits in that, in those jobs alone, has uh, huge economic benefits for, for this area. An Armadale paleontologist says a historic, prehistoric, I should say, crocodile's last meal could reveal more than just its age. Fragments dating back more than 95 million years were found on a property near Winton in outback Queensland, with the croc's last meal of a small dinosaur found fossilised inside its stomach. While researchers have been piecing it back together, they believe it may be the first evidence of the crocodile's famous death roll. Dr Matt White from the University of New England says the double barrel discovery is a world first. So it was a very cute little dinosaur, probably a little bit bigger than a chicken, 1.2 kilos. It would have looked something like Ducky from Land Before Time. But then the crocodile it was developing a, a stronger neck region, so it was able to grab a hold of prey and twist it and turn it around. And uh, developing a new hunting technique. 
Agricultural researchers are confident a new centre in Narrabri will generate the innovation the sector needs. Work has commenced on the building for the $12 million centre, which is expected to be operational for the winter grains harvest. Rob Long from the Wheat Research Foundation says researchers and students at the centre will look into how the quality of grain yields can be improved. The other thing is heat tolerance. We're in a period of climate change. Uh, there's a lot of work being done on the phenology and being able to produce higher yields and higher quality grain in an increasing temperature climate. A former Diamonds netball player will be teaching Northwest kids the skills to become a professional athlete this week. Susan Petit will join the Corindai pre-season camp as a rare opportunity for the club to push for more re uh, junior res registrations. Corindai coach Rob Gregg says the mental aspect of sport will be a main focus. For our, our juniors especially, it, it, it does make it tough when you're, you know, we've got quite a lot of travel involved when it comes to carnivals, as a lot of uh, regional sites do. So getting that high quality competition is always a, a benefit as well. Really drilling down on the basic skills required to be competitive in those, in those age groups. Also making news, New South Wales health authorities say they are considering whether to take action against the nurses' union over yesterday's strike, which saw thousands of nurses walk off the job across New South Wales and New England Northwest in breach of the Industrial Relations Commission's order. Looking to the weather for New England Northwest, partly cloudy with fog building this morning across the northern tablelands and slopes. Uh, northwest slopes and plains. There's a slight chance of a shower towards the east, likely this morning and this afternoon. Sunny elsewhere. Tamworth heading for a top of 31 today. Moree expecting a maximum of 34 degrees. Narrabri 33. 29 for Inverell. Glen Innes heading for a top of 24. And Armidale expecting a top of 25. For news anytime, search for ABC Local and select your region. Alive. How long does it last for? The, the pain, the itchy, the scratchy? Probably only one day, but it was pretty long intense. Enough, yeah. Pretty intense and, um, yeah, the bumps it looked like a rash, really stuck around for a while. Yeah, nasty. Honest John says the Academy Awards and hosting mm. wasn't a poison chalice for the goat, the yes. greatest of all time, Ricky Gervais. Yes, he did. He was very popular and also very controversial. Like yeah, all the things. Both. Funny, controversial, popular, loved. Have you seen, have you up to date with Afterlife, his TV show? Third season's out? I've seen the I've seen the first season, I think. Uh, it was emotionally taxing and I just wasn't ready to go there again. Have you seen it, Honest John? Love to know your thoughts. Hmm. Let me know whether or not I should go for it or whether I'll just cry the whole way through. You're on ABC Newcastle Breakfast, the news and early AM on the way on this sunny Wednesday. Subscribe to the ABC Newcastle e-newsletter today. You'll get all the latest news and program highlights from the last week on air, straight to your inbox. To subscribe, head to abc.net.au slash Newcastle. Good morning, I'm Madeline Lewis with ABC News. Offshore wind farms, pumped hydro and large-scale battery storage are among more than $100 billion of private investment interest in the Hunter and Central Coast Renewable Energy Zone. Amelia Bernasconi reports. In a region underpinned by coal production, the New South Wales Energy Minister Matt Keane says the Hunter will continue to be the energy powerhouse of New South Wales. Interest has been registered for almost 90 projects in 11 local government areas from the Central Coast to the Upper Hunter. Among them, there's commercial interest in 24 solar projects, 13 onshore and 7 offshore wind projects, as well as 35 large-scale batteries and 8 pumped hydro proposals. The Energy Minister says combined, the projects could deliver more than 100,000 gigawatt hours of renewable energy a year. That's equivalent to the annual output of up to 10 coal-fired power stations. Prince Andrew has settled a sexual assault case brought by a woman who says she was trafficked to him. North America correspondent Barbara Miller has the details. In a letter to the New York court handling the civil case against Prince Andrew, a lawyer for Virginia Dufresne says the parties have agreed to settle for an undisclosed amount. 
However, the document states that the prince has agreed to make a substantial donation to Miss Dufresne's charity for sex abuse victims and that he accepts that she's an established abuse victim who has been subjected to unfair public attacks. Further, the Queen's son has agreed to demonstrate his regret for associating with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Barbara Miller, ABC News. NATO officials say the withdrawal of some Russian troops from Ukraine's border is cause for cautious optimism, but not a clear sign of de-escalation. Europe correspondent Nick Dole reports from Kiev. Videos released by Russia's military appear to show troops retreating from Ukraine's border. It's been welcomed by some as a sign of easing geopolitical tensions, but NATO and Western leaders have warned the perceived de-escalation may be a distraction. France's Foreign Office says everything is still in place for a massive Russian attack on Ukraine. Russia has repeatedly denied it plans to invade. After meeting with his German counterpart in Moscow, President Vladimir Putin committed to further talks and said Russia doesn't want a war in Europe. Nick Dahl, ABC News, Kiev. New South Wales health authorities say they're considering whether to take action against the nurses' union over yesterday's strike, which saw thousands of nurses walk off the job in breach of the Industrial Relations Commission's orders. With the details, Jean Kennedy. <laughs> Thousands of nurses and midwives across the state joined yesterday's rallies to protest over staffing levels and pay. We're struggling. It's obvious that we're struggling. We wouldn't be here if we were coping. The strike went ahead despite the Industrial Relations Commission ordering it be called off. In Parliament, the Premier described the nurses as frontline heroes. We do hope that we can provide a resolution to those matters as quickly as possible. The union's Brett Holmes has urged health authorities not to prosecute the union over the strike. Well, I think it would be uh, unfortunate. New South Wales Health says it's considering its options. The Hunter New England Health District has again recorded the highest number of COVID infections in New South Wales in the latest reporting period. 1,259 people tested positive, the majority detected through rapid antigen tests. 41 people are in hospital, including four in intensive care, and one person from Newcastle died. The district has led daily infection rates for more than a week. Newcastle figure skater Kehlani Crane will not compete in tomorrow's medal round after a disappointing performance in the short program at the Winter Olympics overnight. Tracy Holmes reports. Crane pulled out of a triple lutz, one of the required elements in the program, and was heavily penalised, scoring 49.93, unable to make the top 25 progressing to Thursday's free skate. The lead is held by 15-year-old Russian Camilla Valieva, who was given a last-minute reprieve by the Court of Arbitration for Sport, allowing her to skate despite a doping allegation which is still to be addressed. Four Australians will compete in the cross-country team sprint classic today, Jess Eaton and Casey Wright in the women's, with Sevi de Campo and Phil Bellingham in the men's. Tracy Holmes, ABC Sport, Beijing. The chance of fog early this morning in the Hunter, followed by a mostly sunny afternoon. Fire danger is high in the Greater Hunter. Newcastle heading for a top of 28 degrees, Maitland 29. We'll see on ABC Newcastle. News is next. Hi, I'm Richard Feidler. Tune in to Conversations weekday mornings from 11 here on ABC Radio or choose from thousands of shockingly thought-provoking conversations anytime on the ABC Listen app or wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, I'm Madeline Lewis with ABC News. Prince Andrew has settled a lawsuit filed by Virginia Dufre, who alleged she was sexually trafficked to the British royal by a financier, Jeffrey Epstein, when she was 17. A letter filed to the US District Court says the Duke of York will pay an undisclosed sum to Ms Dufre, as well as a substantial donation to a charity in support of victims' rights. In a statement, lawyers for both parties also say the Duke regrets his association with Epstein. UK media lawyer Mark Stevens says the Prince had very few options left to avoid a humiliating public hearing. I think Prince Andrew didn't really have any alternative but to settle. He's already reputationally to toast. Uh, his reputation has been irretrievably tarnished by these allegations made by Virginia Joffrey. 
The managing director of the ABC says taxpayers will no longer pay for defamation costs incurred by staff's social media use. Last year, the public broadcaster paid defamation costs to federal Liberal MP Andrew Lemming, who sued over a social media post by a reporter. In a parliamentary hearing, David Anderson told Liberal Senator Andrew Bragg that employees have been warned about new obligations. We updated our contracts, wrote to everybody and make it absolutely perfectly clear that we will not take legal liability for your actions for your personal use of social media. Okay, so that's now your policy. So so the ABC will not be vicariously liable in future for personal social media posts. Uh, That is correct. New South Wales Health says it's considering whether to wait whether to take action against the nurses' union over yesterday's strike action, which saw thousands of nurses across the state walk off the job in breach of the Industrial Relations Commission's orders. The union says 8,500 nurses and midwives across the state joined the rallies to protest over staffing levels and pay. The union's Brett Holmes says nurses turned out in amazing numbers to voice their concerns and call for change and has urged health authorities not to prosecute the union and punish nurses and midwives over the strike. The Catholic-run company that operates a Hunter Hospital and several local nursing homes says it will never support voluntary assisted dying for anyone in its care. Giselle Wakatama reports. In November last year, the Voluntary Assisted Dying Bill successfully passed the New South Wales Lower House of Parliament. The bill has been subject of an inquiry by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Law and Justice. The Little Company of Mary operates a dozen aged care homes in Lake Macquarie and in the Upper and Lower Hunter, as well as the Calvary Mater Hospital. In its submission to the inquiry, it says Calvary does not support voluntary assisted dying, nor does it recognise such interventions as medical treatments. Accordingly, it says it won't implement any such legislation. It says there needs to be more focus on palliative care and funding to improve end-of-life outcomes. The men's number one tennis player Novak Djokovic says he's prepared to miss the French Open and Wimbledon tournaments rather than be vaccinated against coronavirus. Djokovic was deported from Melbourne last month after a visa granted on medical grounds ahead of the Australian Open was cancelled. The tennis star says despite choosing not to be vaccinated, he's not part of the global anti-vax movement. In men's A-League soccer, the Newcastle Jets are hoping they can make a second successful raid on the Southern Capital when they play Melbourne City on Friday night. The Jets downed Melbourne victory on Saturday and will play City for the second time in 10 days. Midfielder Mario Arquez played his first game in the starting lineup against victory and says that's made him more hungry to cement a, a starting spot. I'm looking forward to show everything I have inside. I think I can help the team a lot and I think that nobody see at the moment what can I what can I give to the team. Uh, so yeah, this is some motivation I have inside to keep working every day. And briefly, Australia's T20 men's cricketers have beaten Sri Lanka by six wickets in Canberra to take an unassailable 3-0 lead in the five-match series. Adelaide United has surprised A-League men's soccer champion Melbourne City, winning 2-1 away from home. And Canberra United's winless streak in the A-League women's competition is over after they thumped the Western Sydney Wanderers 5-0 in Blacktown last night. A mostly sunny afternoon ahead in the Hunter region. Newcastle heading for a top of 28 degrees. Maitland 29, Singleton heading for a top of 31 degrees. ABC News. ABC TV. I killed two people last night after I tried really hard not to. Okay, that's not ideal. The award-winning, twisted, cat-and-mouse dark comedy thriller is back. You shot someone. In the hand. Killing Eve, the finale season. So what game are you playing? Streaming from Sunday the 27th of February on ABC iView or watch on ABC TV. A cloudy day today for the Northern Rivers with a medium chance of showers during the morning and afternoon and light winds. And for the Tablelands, a partly cloudy day, just a slight chance of a shower at Tenerfield. 23 there, 25 for Byron Bay, 26 for Ballina and Lismore, 27 for Tweed Heads and Grafton, 28. We are coming up to your next local news. So following that, we'll be taking a look at yesterday's nurses' strike and also uh, rural financial fortunes and how businesses are faring 
uh, in our region. There's been a disturbing uptick in the number of businesses uh, not only seeking help but uh, having to fold. So we'll take a look at that after the news. <laughs> Good morning, Bronwyn Herbert with ABC North Coast News. The head of the Northern Rivers Rural Financial Counselling Service says up to 20% of its Northern Rivers clients have been so badly affected by the pandemic they've had to shut down. The organisation assists small businesses that are struggling because of drought, bushfires or COVID. CEO Gary Goldberg says that's a big increase in calls for help compared to previous natural disasters. But there was always light at the end of the tunnel because we know that at some point the drought is going to end, at some point the bushfires are going to be put out. With the advent of COVID and the longevity of COVID, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Small businesses that experienced a downturn over summer can now apply for a New South Wales government support payment of up to $5,000 per week through Service New South Wales. Treasurer Matt Keane says the Small Business Support Program will provide cash flow assistance to help businesses get through the current COVID-19 outbreak. Funds can be used to cover business expenses such as wages, rent and loss of perishable goods. A North Coast a Liberal MP is calling on the state government to revisit controversial planning laws to protect koala habitat. It comes after the federal government recently reclassified koalas as an endangered species. Proposed changes to state planning laws to protect koalas in 2020 were deeply controversial. It led to new legislation last year, but only in certain areas that didn't include rural zoned land. Catherine Cusack says the state government needs to do more to protect habitat in the areas where development might take place. The ministers who were working on that have left or are in different roles. So I guess the new Karate cabinet, I'm really hoping, will push on and put these in place. I think it's become extremely urgent. A nurses' union representative says there's been a mass exodus of experienced staff leaving the Tweed Hospital because of poor pay and conditions. 18 nurses who were employed in the Tweed Hospital Emergency Department resigned during December and the first week of January. Tweed Branch President of the New South Wales Nurses Association, Kristen Ryan Agnew, says her former colleagues are now working at hospitals on the Gold Coast because they could no longer cope with the New South Wales nurse staffing ratios. So you potentially can have one senior nurse in a, an acute area of emergency and all junior staff. They're exhausted and they're terrified for their own registrations. And we're only a kilometre from the border and Queensland have far, far better conditions than we do. New South Wales Health in a statement says that the flexible staff to patient ratio system currently in place ensures the right number of nurses in the right place at the right time. A social services and advocacy provider on the far north coast is hoping the housing and homelessness crisis will be a key issue in the upcoming federal election. Social Futures has released six key suggestions it says would help solve the issue. They involve more investment in housing stock, changes to laws and regulations and improvements to funding for support services. CEO Tony Davies says homelessness is worsening and governments need to commit to tackling the issue. It is the responsibility of all sides of politics to stop talking about themselves, to stop blaming each other for the pandemic and to see beyond the immediate and invest in the future of our country. Health authorities have confirmed a person in their 80s from Tweed Heads has died from COVID-19 in the latest reporting period. There have been 384 new COVID cases confirmed since 4pm on Monday. The case numbers have increased by 138 on yesterday's figures. 39 positive patients remain in North Coast hospitals and three patients are currently in intensive care. And the region's Water and Biosecurity Authority will today elect a new chair and deputy chairperson. 
Richmond Valley councillors Sandra Humphreys and Robert Musto and Sharon Cadwallader from Ballina Council are the only councillors to return to Rouse County Council following last year's local government elections. It's the first term for the other five councillors who have been appointed to the region's water authority. A motion to include the investigation of the Dunoon Dam as an option in the future water strategy is also up for today debate at tonight's meeting. ABC News. Board. Thank you so much, Amir. We have a great Wednesday. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. MedTech developer Rowan O'Reilly there from Neuromersive is working alongside the University of Newcastle and the HRMI to get that medical feasibility study going. And if you would like to get in touch, more than happy to pass on any details there, give us a call 65422800. <laughs> Duran and hungry like the wolf. It's nearly news time here on ABC Upper Hunter. Stay with me after that. The Corona Cast team get their crystal ball out. Find out more after the seven o'clock news. ABC Radio. It's yours. Yours for local news. Yours for local stories. Yours for emergency information. ABC Upper Hunter. of dollars worth of interest in the Hunter Central Coast Renewable Energy Zone. 
Prince Andrew settles on a sexual assault case and Russian troops start to withdraw from Ukraine. It's seven o'clock. Good morning. I'm Madeline Lewis with ABC News. The New South Wales government says it's received more than $100 billion worth of interest in renewable energy projects for the Hunter and Central Coast. Amelia Bernasconi reports. Seven offshore wind farms, eight pumped hydro and 35 large-scale battery storages are among the almost 90 projects with commercial interest for the Hunter Central Coast Renewable Energy Zone. New South Wales Energy Minister Matt Keane says combined, the projects have the potential to deliver 100,000 gigawatt hours of renewable energy a year, equivalent to the annual output of up to 10 coal-fired power stations. The projects stretch across 11 local government areas from the Central Coast to the Upper Hunter. There's also commercial interest in 24 solar projects and 13 onshore wind farms. A settlement has been reached in the sexual assault case against Prince Andrew. North America correspondent Barbara Miller. No details have been released of the sum of the settlement between the Duke of York and Virginia Dufre, who alleged in a civil case filed in New York that she was trafficked for sex to the royal by financier Jeffrey Epstein when she was a teenager. In court documents, however, a lawyer for Ms. Dufre states that the prince will make a substantial donation to Ms. Dufre's sex victims charity and that he accepts she is an established victim of abuse. The prince has also pledged to demonstrate his regret for associating with Jeffrey Epstein. Barbara Miller, ABC News. President Vladimir Putin says Russia does not want war in Europe after withdrawing some troops following drills near Ukraine's border. Europe correspondent Nick Dole reports from Kiev. The announcement that Russia is removing some troops from Ukraine's border has been met with cautious optimism from NATO and Western leaders. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson described the move as a diplomatic opening, but warned that Russia is giving off mixed messages. The intelligence that we're seeing today is, is still not encouraging. Russian President Vladimir Putin met with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Moscow overnight. The pair agreed to continue talks, but they didn't see eye to eye on Ukraine's right to access future NATO membership. Nick Dahl, ABC News, Kiev. Voters will have to wear a mask to cast a ballot at the forthcoming federal election, but won't have to be vaccinated. The Australian Electoral Commission has been detailing the extra steps it will take to make sure polling places are COVID safe. The federal election is due to be held before the end of May. Under questioning at a parliamentary hearing, Electoral Commissioner Tom Rogers explained staff at polling booths will be required to be vaccinated, but not voters. Voters will have to wear a mask? Yes. What if a state wants to require people to have a vaccination about going to a polling booth? But what we have said is there is no requirement for you to be vaccinated uh, to attend a, a polling place. The managing director of the ABC says public broadcasters in the Pacific are being pressured to carry Chinese news content. The ABC is preparing to expand its presence in the region and is lobbying the government for an additional $12 million. David Anderson has told Senate estimates that some journal journalists in the Pacific have concerns about editorial independence. The single biggest piece of information that comes back from us, from them, is concern over the pressure that the Chinese government put on them yeah. to carry content yeah. to broadcast through the Pacific. It was once called soft diplomacy, but I think having at the ABC there would be an important step forward. The New South Wales Nurses Union says frontline health workers will stage more strike action if their pleas for better staffing levels and pay are not addressed. Thousands of nurses and midwives walked off the job yesterday to join protest rallies in Sydney and across regional areas, including Newcastle. It was in defiance of an order from the Industrial Relations Commission to call off the strike. In Parliament, the Premier, Dominic Perrottet, described the nurses as frontline heroes and said he hoped the government could provide a resolution as quickly as possible. The union's Brett Holmes says he hopes so too. Uh, we need the government, we need Premier Perrottet to make those commitments and not only say them inside Parliament, but make sure that they happen in reality. We welcome his suggestion that talks will occur. Independent MP for Lake Macquarie, Greg Piper, has been appointed Assistant Speaker. Mr Piper was elected unopposed yesterday and says it's an honour. It should not make any difference to my ability to represent people like Macquarie, 
it's really about, I guess, an extension of the um, work that I have been doing in the Parliament for the last three years anyway as part of the Speaker's team. The New South Wales Health Minister, Brad Hazard, has lobbied his federal counterpart to continue funding GP access services in the Hunter. Late last year, concerns were raised about funding cuts to five after-hours clinics in the region. Mr Hazard has responded to a question on notice, saying while it's a federal responsibility, Hunter New England Health has provided more than a million dollars in funding since 2011. He told Parliament he's made representations to the Commonwealth, seeking a commitment to ongoing funding. The CEO of Newcastle Airport hopes that adding to its flight schedule will help a bid to secure funding for a terminal expansion. It's hoping the state government will contribute to the $55 million still needed for the project. Budget airline Bonza has announced it plans to offer six flights out of Newcastle to Queensland's Sunshine Coast and Whitsundays by mid-2022. Dr Peter Colk says it's partnerships like this that might encourage the investment. We're hoping things like bonds are showing confidence in our route and we've got Qantas starting Adelaide at the end of March and Lord Howe Island. So we're showing success and we're just hoping that the New South Wales government sees that and chooses to partner with us. Plans are gaining momentum for a solar farm near Merriwar, which could have the potential to power more than 150,000 homes. Andy Love reports. Light Source Development Services Australia is behind plans for the Goulburn River solar project between Wallar and Merriwar. The proponent says it could provide 4% of the state's electricity demand at peak output, creating 350 construction jobs. It consists of a solar farm and battery energy storage system. Nearly a million solar panels would be installed on a 2,000 hectare site. Plans are currently before the Federal Environment Department, which is assessing potential impacts of threatened species. The company says its plans have catered for the presence of the threatened Regent Honeyeater, avoiding more than 700 hectares of the bird's habitat. Russian figure skater Kamila Valieva is on target to win another Olympic gold medal despite fighting a doping charge. Tracy Holmes has the story. The 15-year-old arrived in Beijing tipped to grab headlines and win gold medals. Instead, she found herself in the middle of a doping scandal that has dominated global media attention. With last-minute approval by the Court of Arbitration for Sport to skate in the women's program, she slipped early in her routine before executing a stunning performance, fighting back tears throughout. Her score of 82.16 could not be bettered by any of the more experienced skaters. Valieva heads into Thursday's free skate as the one to beat. The IOC has already said there'll be no medal presentation in Beijing if Valieva finishes in the top three. And now with more sport, here's Jack Snape. Australia has beaten Sri Lanka by six wickets in its men's T20 cricket match in Canberra to secure the best of five series after just three games. Fringe bowler Kane Richardson took three wickets and says he wants to play in the World Cup later this year despite the presence of Pat Cummins, Josh Hazelwood and Mitchell Stark. And they're obviously bigger names and they're bowling super well, so to just do enough to keep getting better and, and put my name up for selection if anything happens to those guys. Australian basketballer Ben Simmons says a combination of factors impacted his mental health at Philadelphia, prompting him to seek a trade away from the NBA team that drafted him. Having moved to Brooklyn last week, Simmons says he needed change. It wasn't about the basketball, it wasn't about the money, anything like that. You know, I want to be who I am and, and get back to, you know, playing basketball at that level and, you know, being myself. And in soccer's men's A-League, Adelaide United has surprised Melbourne City, winning 2-1 away from home. While in the women's, Canberra United has beaten Western Sydney 5-0 to claim its first win of the season. In finance, Wall Street has surged as signs of easing tensions along the Russia and Ukraine border brought buyers back to the U.S. stock market. The S&P 500 is up 1.3 per cent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 1 per cent. The Australian share market is expected to follow the trend with the ASX SPY 200 futures up 0.9 of a per cent. The Australian dollar is higher, trading at 71.4 U.S. cents. A mostly sunny afternoon in the Hunter, Newcastle heading for a top of 28 degrees, Maitland 29, Singleton heading for a top of 31 degrees. Amelia Bernasconi on ABC Upper Hunter. ABC Upper Hunter. You can't go through a news bulletin without hearing... 
the C word, COVID, maybe the P word for pandemic. Where's it all heading? The Corona Tony Mitchell and Big Yellow Taxi taking us up to the 7.30 local news. On the other side of that, the Energy Minister with us. Good morning, I'm Madeline Lewis with ABC Hunter News. Offshore wind farms, pumped hydro and large-scale battery storage are among more than $100 billion of private investment interest in the Hunter Central Coast Renewable Energy Zone. Amelia Bernasconi reports. In a region underpinned by coal production, the New South Wales Energy Minister Matt Keane says the Hunter will continue to be the energy powerhouse of New South Wales. Interest has been registered for almost 90 projects in 11 local government areas from the Central Coast to the Upper Hunter. Among them, there's commercial interest in 24 solar projects, 13 onshore and 7 offshore wind projects, as well as 35 large-scale batteries and 8 pumped hydro proposals. The Energy Minister says combined, the projects could deliver more than 100,000 gigawatt hours of renewable energy a year. That's equivalent to the annual output of up to 10 coal-fired power stations. The Catholic-run company that operates a Hunter Hospital and several local nursing homes says it will never support voluntary assisted dying for anyone in its care. Jizo Akatama reports. In November last year, the voluntary assisted dying bill successfully passed the New South Wales Lower House of Parliament. The bill has been subject of an inquiry by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Law and Justice. The little company of Mary operates a dozen aged care homes in Lake Macquarie and in the Upper and Lower Hunter, as well as the Calvary Mater Hospital. In its submission to the inquiry, it says Calvary does not support voluntary assisted dying, nor does it recognise such interventions as medical treatments. Accordingly, it says it won't implement any such legislation. It says there needs to be more focus on palliative care and funding to improve end-of-life outcomes. Independent member for Lake Macquarie, Greg Piper, has been appointed assistant speaker unopposed. Mr Piper says it was a logical appointment given he sits on the speaker's panel and the former assistant speaker has stepped into a ministry role. He says it's a privilege. It should not make any difference to my ability to represent the people of Lake Macquarie. It's really about, I guess, an extension of the um, work that I have been doing in the Parliament for the last three years anyway as part of the Speaker's team. The Hunter New England Health District has again recorded the highest number of COVID infections in New South Wales in the latest reporting period. 1,259 people tested positive. 41 people are in hospital, including four in intensive care, and one person from Newcastle has died. The absentee rate at local public schools is increasing. In a question on notice, the Education Minister Sarah Mitchell was asked for a regional breakdown of the absentee rate for each November since 2018. It sat at more than 15% last November for the Central Coast Newcastle area. That compares to 13% in 2018. The total absentee rate across all state public schools has also increased by more than 2% between 2018 and 2021. Newcastle figure skater Kehlani Crane will not compete in tomorrow's medal round after a disappointing performance in the short program at the Winter Olympics overnight. Tracy Holmes reports. Crane pulled out of a triple lutz, one of the required elements in the program, and was heavily penalised, scoring 49.93, unable to make the top 25 progressing to Thursday's free skate. The lead is held by 15-year-old Russian Camilla Valieva, who was given a last-minute reprieve by the Court of Arbitration for Sport, allowing her to skate despite a doping allegation which is still to be addressed. Four Australians will compete in the cross-country team sprint classic today. Jess Eaton and Casey Wright in the women's with Sevi de Campo and Phil Bellingham in the men's. Tracy Holmes, ABC Sport, Beijing. Australian basketballer Ben Simmons says a combination of factors impacted his mental health at Philadelphia, prompting him to seek a trade away from the NBA team. The 25-year-old former Novocastrian moved to the Brooklyn Nets last week after refusing to suit up this season for the 76ers franchise that drafted him and for which he signed a big money contract in 2019. Simmons says he needed change. It wasn't about the basketball, it wasn't about the money, anything like that. Um, you know, I want to be who I am and get back to, you know, playing basketball at that level and, you know, being myself. 
A mostly sunny afternoon ahead in the Hunter region. Newcastle heading for a top of 28 degrees, 29 for Maitland, 31 in Singleton. For more local news, search ABC Newcastle News online.